Hi, Emma. Hi, Martin. Nice to see you. Hi. Um, Emma, look, obviously, going into a massive, massive game, usually we'd, the first question would be about how your team's shaping up and that kind of thing, but we had the news today that Alexi Pateas is in the Barcelona squad. Does that give you another, another sort of puzzle to solve, another problem to solve going into this game? No, I think we know every player they have is fantastic. Um, hopefully it adds another 10,000 people to the crowd. Um, we're looking forward to playing at this magnificent stadium. And as I said, after the first game, it was important for us to be in the tie. And at 1-0, there is no doubt with their history here that we have to be at our very best. But I've said it time and time again, we have a dressing room of players that want to be in this position. And I know for sure we will give it everything we've got. And Aaron Magda, um, you've both played in, in behind of huge games, but how is tomorrow 65, 70,000 plus here at the Camp Nou? How is that going to be in terms of just personal achievements, never mind club achievements? Um, yeah, I mean, I played in these kind of games, many of them. So I think for me, it feels, I haven't actually thought in those, um, in those ways. For me, it just feels like another game and then a game that. I just want to get through and I want to reach that final. So that has been the biggest focus. But obviously I went to I went to Camp Nou when I was 13 with my dad and we actually saw Chelsea Barcelona playing on the pitch. So it kind of feels in that sense really cool if you look in the bigger picture. But in the small picture, it's just about winning tomorrow's game, getting through to the final. And Emma, so one more for me if you don't mind. Um, we found out today that the men's FA Cup final is going to be at the same time as the Women's Champions League final. Um, there's obviously a good chance there could be two English teams in the Champions League final. I just want to get your reaction. Well, clearly there's been a lack of communication between those scheduling it. Um, it's always disappointing when those things happen. It's the first time I've heard that. And you'd like to think that regardless of busy scheduling calendars, that we can figure it out not to put them on the same day. Thank you, Anton. Emma, can we come across to you next? Hi both, nice to see you. Hope you had good journeys across. Um, yeah, Emma, you, you said there that 1-0 down playing at this stadium against them, you really do have to be at your best, but how would you sort of um, view your chances of, of getting through? Well, I'm not a betting person. As you know, it's legal. But what I would say is that this is what we work for. We work to be in these positions. We know it's going to be a quick pitch, a big pitch. We know they're going to dominate the ball. For us, we know the areas we have to improve on um, to get opportunities. And I think we have players that are capable of doing that. But we have to accept, as I've said many times, you have to suffer. And you suffer more against Barcelona than anybody else. So for us as a team, I think we've shown in the previous game, we can defend and we're going to have to do it at an even higher level, but make sure the execution with the football for us has to be at a better level. So just excited, to be honest. Yeah, Magda, as Emma says, you had to defend in the first leg and you've shown that you can do that. You've had a really good partnership with Marin over the last couple of weeks and obviously you've had injuries in that department. So how much are you kind of looking forward to testing that defensive partnership and that kind of, um, yeah, I guess, defence in adversity against someone like Puteus who could potentially come back into the frame? I think uh, the nice thing about this team that I'm a part of is that we, we really, really enjoy these kind of challenges. Because, yeah, we, <clears throat> like you said, we have lost two centre-backs to injury who have played a lot this year. And people who have trained really, really hard and done really, really well behind the scenes are now getting the opportunity to show that. So I think uh, I'm really, really excited. I was really excited about the other game and I'm really excited about tomorrow. Um, I know that we can do even better as well, which gives me confidence. But yeah, like Emma said, we know that we will have to suffer and I think we enjoyed that as well. Yeah, and just finally, Magda, you said there that you came here with your dad when you were younger. Have you spoken about that before coming here? Have you spoken to your family about kind of your memories of, of this stadium and, and sort of the iconicness of it, really? Yeah, we definitely spoke about it when we 
uh, qualified to this semi-final after Leon. My dad was was at Stamford Bridge when we did it, so then immediately we were like, wow, okay, now we're going to do it, and we actually saw them play, so it's a little bit like full circle moment. Uh, so it's it's cool in that sense, but like any other game of football, really, that's what it's going to be tomorrow. And I think once you step out on the pitch, you're going to forget about the history of the of the stadium and just focus on the game. Best of luck. Thank you. Charlotte, next, please. Hi, Emma. Hi, Magda. Um, Emma, we know that Barcelona are comfortable when the, they're in control. How important is an early goal and a good start from your team tomorrow? Well, of course, it would help. But I think we, we understand that most teams, when they come here, inevitably... Um, are going to be put in difficult situations. I think for us as a team, it's important for us to be calm when it, whether it's moments that don't go very well or moments where we don't have the ball or moments where perhaps there's momentum in favour of Barcelona. I'm an experienced coach. And when I say this, I, I mean it genuinely. They are a world-class team. You have to stay in the game. And you've seen it when Roma have come here maybe Wolfsburg last year, Bayern Munich, you see how easy it is if you don't manage the game in the right moment. So for us, we have to use all of our experience in, in the right situations. And if an early goal comes, fantastic. But for us, we're focusing on getting the performance right. That's what we have to now. And the European Club Association has just released a statement. You talked about scheduling earlier. And it says it doesn't want players at its members' clubs to be called up to the national team until the international window officially starts on July the 10th, 10 days before the World Cup starts. What's your reaction to that? Well, I think we have to reflect on the number of injuries that have taken place in the women's game and say, ultimately, the duty of care we have to players, that I think there's a valid argument to sticking to windows and there's a reason and a rationale for those windows because especially the last three years players have had so little rest maybe a couple of weeks at the end of the season it's not enough I can't speak for this upcoming tournament I'm not involved in those decision make uh, those decisions being made but I do think that as the women's game has progressed from the amateur game into a professional game, that we have to, there has to be more strict, uh, stringent restrictions on that for player welfare, not because, you know, they're international, you know, I, I, I respect they want to win their tournaments, but we seriously have to look at players having more rest. And on a follow up to that, if I may, can you give us an update on your squad available for tomorrow and the nature of Khadisha Buchanan's injury? Yeah, um, Khadisha, um, I, th I think there was a slim chance maybe she could have been available um, this week. I don't know the exact nature of the injury within her ankle. It's not long term, but like anybody who understands ankle injuries um, it's a ligament that might take another week might take a couple of weeks might take three weeks um, we just have to take it day by day with her thank you Emma hello Jesus Carrillo for Football Club Barcelona TV, Barca TV. Could you please share a little secret in the first game during the first, f first 15 minutes? Barca really got a lot of momentum and in an injury, in the, in the, in the injury that suffered Wenger, there was like a break and then the Chelsea was reborn, so to speak, with a great deal of opportunities. So could you... Tell us to the extent of your possibilities. What did you tell the players to somehow readapt to the situation so quickly? Um, I don't know. Maybe Berger had a minor injury. Um, 
I think everybody, the English press know, I'm never going to tell you what I said to them. It's, um, but I did remind them the sun was out and they needed to put their sun cream on. We can come across the front. Oh, actually, it's probably easier for my Ulster to go to the back, if that's all right. Uh, hi, hi, Emma. Hi, Magda. Uh, I have a, a quick question for, for Emma. Um, Barcelona hasn't lost at home uh, for over four years. Obviously, someday this will be broken. So what uh, makes Chelsea the, the team that, uh, bre that has the chance to, to break the, this Barcelona record at, at home? Thank you. It's a football match. The game is 1-0. It's We have a fair and equal chance to do that. And nobody denies that they are a fabulous team that have an amazing history, particularly here. But I know the dressing room that we have and I know that every single player um, plays at a very high level. And if we perform at the levels we expect for ourselves, then we will make it a competitive game. Hola, buenas tardes, Emma, eh, Magda. Eh. Hi, one question, Emma. Lucy Browns in Brescia, will it condition your just your 11 tomorrow? And Magda, you played against Eddie in Osuala. So which, which is worse for you to cover, to tackle? Which form was more difficult to mark? Between Oswala or Jaycee yeah. or, oh. or, or Oswala? Okay. Um, good question. I think they are um, similar and different in, uh, in different ways. I think they are both extremely powerful, quick strikers. Um, I think Jaycee is very technical, very good in many, in many ways. So I think they are both fantastic players, really, who are difficult in their own ways. And... Uh, yeah, I can't really say who is harder to play against than the, than the other. I think they both cause a big, big threat that we have to be aware of. Hola. Hi, Emma and Magda. Question. In the case of Emma, you are saying that Barca has a, a squad, they are ma magnificent players, and mentally, mentally, how do we empower your players to go to the match in a full uh, camp No, and, and to be there in, in order to win the match? And Magda, question for you. Jonathan, the trainer of Barca, mentioned today expected a Chelsea more direct and uh, more associated uh, football. What do you expect you, the players from Barca? <laughs> um, let me remember the question. Yeah. For Magda, it might be easier for you to go first. It was yeah. in terms of yeah. um, how you cope with the direct style of play. Um, of what I expect of Barca. Or I think Barca has such a trademark of, of style of play that we are very well well aware of all of us that are sitting here it's in their backbones the the style of play and they're very smart players as well so i think they also kind of take what you give them so that's why you have to be on your toes in all areas and ready for anything that they throw at us so i think i mean we know their style we know it's possession based we know they want to keep the ball and drag us out of areas and exploit that, those areas. So I think for us it's just about being disciplined, being smart and being ready for, for anything really. Mentality. I think for us as a team, it's something we work at all of the time, not one game. And while there are very different things at stake, there's a Champions League final at stake. The players need no motivation for that. But they definitely need all of the skills that have been developed over a long period of time to manage playing in front of a 
large crowd that's going to be noisy with a team that are going to keep the ball for longer periods than we are. This is a strength of our team. We are built to cope with the, the challenges. And like Magda says, we like to suffer. So we're as prepared as we possibly can be. Buenas tardes, Sebastián Murcia de Femina Fútbol. Mi pregunta. Con Femina. Emma. So, how do you feel in the charging room and how do you deal with the university and the pressure in such an important match tomorrow? Taking into account there are more than 65,000 people that will be tomorrow here. How do you deal with this pressure? I mean, I have to say, how many people want to be sit in the position I'm sat in or sat in, or in the position she is playing tomorrow? This is not pressure. This is a joy to experience and take part in something that we are working hard every day um, to do. Um, and as I say it again, we are preparing for this game with every training session, with every game that we play, not just this season, but every season. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm grateful to be in this position. I certainly don't feel the pressure of it. Hi, Emma. Hi, Magda. Good to see you. Um, I noticed that Fran Kirby has travelled with the squad, but she's not going to be available for selection. Can you give us an update on where she is in, in her recovery? Yeah, Fran wanted to come with the team. Um, she's part of the team, so um, great to have her with us. Um, at this moment in time, I don't have any more updates. Um, she has been on the grass a little bit, but... We're having to manage day by day what that looks like, and I don't have a timeline for a return either. Can you share with us exactly what the issue is? Or? It's an issue in her knee, um, and having to we have to manage if she's in pain, she's not going on the grass. If she has a pain-free day, she goes on the grass. Sometimes she's doing some sort of not low intensity, I was trying to think of the word, anti, the anti-gravity treadmill type work. It's a combination of sometimes it's going really, really well, then we have little setbacks, it's going well again, then we have set, setbacks. I think at the moment, um, probably the beginning of last week, I'd have had a bit more clarity for you this week. I think I have less for you, I'm afraid. No, that's fine, no problem. And just one more from me. Um, obviously, you kept it tight in the first leg at Stamford Bridge. You need to ultimately find a way to win here. How will that change, or does that change how you approach this game in terms of style? As I said, you can't play for 80% of the game without the ball. You have to have it for some part, and then you have to... You have to execute when you, when you do have it. You know, when we did have two good chances without playing particularly well with the football. We have a team that's capable of creating chances. And for us, we have to focus on how we're going to get those and maximise it when it comes. Thanks, Vicky. We'll move over to Zoom now. I'll turn this up as loud as I can so you guys can hear. I'm just conscious of time. Molly from The Telegraph, if I can come across to you, that'd be brilliant. Thank you for waiting so patiently. Thanks, Lydia. Um, hi, just one for Emma. Um, regarding the ECA statement, um, which was referred to earlier, I just wondered your thoughts. What would you think about the argument that some might have that if clubs don't re release players until 10 days before World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, with all the travelling involved, privatisation, all of those things, that also might have a negative impact on, on, on player welfare too? Listen, I can't... I've, I've just heard this 10 minutes before I've walked in the room. I don't think I can comment on the plans for the summer. I've said what I've had to say in terms of player welfare for the future. You know, the, the impact immediately is not for me to comment on. Do you have another question, Molly? Or we're all good? Sorry, got stuck there, but thank you very much. No problem, no problem. We'll come across to Emmanuel next, please. Oh, OK, 
Okay, hi. Um, just to start this conversation on a positive note, um, a positive takeaway from last week was having Penel Ada back on the pitch. I'm just curious if we would see her have more time tomorrow. Yes, fantastic to have her back. As I said last week, she's been out. I don't know exactly how long, but she's played 10 minutes of football. So we hope to see her for longer. How much longer? We won't know until tomorrow. Oh, okay, just, just one more question before I move on. Um, a lot of focus have been on, you know, Barcelona's fantastic home record and, you know, how they are unbeaten at home. But nobody's talking about the fact that, you know, Chelsea has an amazing away record this season. Um, do you think that that might, you know, be some sort of advantage tomorrow? Amazing away record, us having an amazing away record. Ah. Will that be an advantage tomorrow? Look, I think it's clear we've had the hardest group in the Champions League. We've had to play the champions in the quarterfinals and then former champions in the semi-final. We've had an incredibly tough Champions League and performed um, at our best levels. But I still think there's more to come from us. And as I said, I was disappointed with some parts of our performance at the weekend because I know we're better... Uh, particularly with the football uh, than we showed and that's something for us to improve upon going into this game and you know as Magda said we relish the challenge we want to be in this situation so we're looking forward to it awesome thank you very much thank you very much awesome <laughs> thanks Emmanuel if unless there's any other further questions I can't see any hands up we will leave it there thanks very much everyone <laughs>